Okay, problem seven says x to the two-thirds raised to the ninth is what? Well, here you need to know that when you have exponents raised to exponents, you need to multiply them together. Two-thirds times nine, this is the same as nine over one. So that would be 18 thirds, and 18 thirds is six. So it's the same as x to the sixth power right there. So it's eight, x to the 18 thirds, 18 divided by three is six, x to the sixth. Okay, problem number eight is to simplify 36xy squared minus 42x squared y over 6xy. You need to factor out the common factor on the top. There's a common factor in terms of a number of 6. 6 goes into 36 and 42, and these both have an x in them, and they both have a y in them. If you factor out the 6xy or divide that out, we're left with an extra 6 and a y from the first term, and 6 goes into 42, 7, and we have an extra x on the top. On the bottom, we have a 6xy, so these cross off, and so that's our answer right there. It's just 6y minus 7x. On number 9, it says x equals 2y. Uh, simplify this expression right here. Uh, if uh, we have this expression, 1 third pi x cubed y, let's take a look at this here a second. That's this problem here. What does the equation below simplify to when x equals 2y? We're substituting 2y in for the x right there. So if we do that, I'm substituting the, uh, going to substitute the 2y right in here for the x, and that would give me 1 third pi, substituting the 2y in for x, that would be 2y gets cubed times a y. Okay, that gives me 1 third pi, 2y cubed, this whole thing gets cubed, so the 2 is cubed, that gives me 8, the y is cubed, and I have another y right here. Simplifying this, we'd have, well I can pull this 8 out in front with that 1 third giving me 8 thirds, I have a pi, and a y to the third times another y would be y to the fourth. That would be the answer to that problem. Number 10 is really messy here. It's 5 over 2x minus 1 over 3y, all that over 2 over 3x squared minus 5 over 2y squared. This is a complex fraction, so what do we have to do is handle each part separately here. We need to get the common denominator up here between these two denominators, 2x and 3y. Well, that common denominator would be 6xy. What's extra in here that's not in here? In other words, how many times does 2x go into 6xy? Well, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and we have an extra y. So it would be 3y times 5, which is 15y, minus 3y goes into uh, 6xy. Well, 3 goes into 6 2 times, and we have an extra x. So it would be 2x times 1, or 2x. On the bottom, the common denominator is 6x squared y squared. 3x squared goes into this, well 3 goes into 6 2 times and we have an extra y squared, so it would be 2y squared times that 2, or 4y squared, let me put my big division sign right there, uh, 2y squared goes in there, well 2 goes into 6 3 times, we have an extra uh, x squared there, so that would be 3x squared times the 5, or 15x squared and there's a minus sign in between these. Now when you're multiplying, it's the same as, uh, sorry, when you're dividing, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this right here. So here we have 15y minus 2x over 6xy times, flip this, it'll be 6x squared y squared over 4y squared minus 15x squared. Okay, what can we do? Well, we can cross off, uh, this is a monomial, and so is this. We can cross off terms like the 6 and the 6. This x crosses off with one of these, and this y divides the 1 with one of these. And at this point, is there anything more we can do? Well, I can't like cross off this 2 with this 4 because this is, uh, this is part of a binomial. It's added to this. So we can't get rid of part of it. Now, we could factor this and do something with it. That'd be fine, but I don't see anything that we can factor here on this. So I think we'd just be left with, well, we have xy times this stuff, 15y uh, minus uh, 2x, and that's all over 4y squared 
minus 15x squared. And I think we got everything good there. You could double check your arithmetic along the way. Okay, this one says, uh, uh, let's take a look at this problem on 11. It says that the, uh, scroll down here a little bit. It says the length of a rectangle is 5 times its width. If the diagonal of the rectangle is 26, what is the width? Well, here's the situation we have on this. It says the length is 5 times its width. So here's my rectangle. The, the width is right here, and my length is 5 times that. And my diagonal here is 26. Well, that gives me a right triangle right here. And by the uh, Pythagorean theorem, we can say that this side squared plus this side squared has to equal this side squared. So in other words, 5w squared, uh, the quantity 5w squared plus w squared equals 26 squared. Well, 5w squared is 25w squared plus another w squared equals 26 squared. 5w plus 1w, 5w squared plus 1w squared is 26w squared equals 26 squared. Divide through by 26 and I get w squared, I'll write this here, w squared equals 26 squared over 26 will just be 26. So if w squared equals 26, take the square root of both sides and w would be the square root of 26. And that's what the answer is to that problem. Okay, the last problem, problem 12 on the EA section, uh, says this. It uh, says uh, Tara uh, made 8M plus 8M over P dollars working at McDonald's, and Joe made 2M minus 5 over P dollars. Lynn made 3 fourths as much as Tara. So in other words, we're going to have to take 3 fourths times this 8M over P. Then it says if they pool their money together, in other words, add all their money together, how much money will they have? So on this, I had to take Tara's amount plus the next person's amount, plus it said, I think, uh, Lynn or something like that made three-fourths of what Tara made. So that's three-fourths times the 8M over P. And then I have to add all these up. So this was 8M over P. This is 2M minus 5 over P. And I just have to simplify this. Uh, 4 goes into 8 two times, so that would be 6M over P. Now this one has a common denominator, so all we have to do is uh, add these up. So 8m and 2m is 10m. 10m plus 6 more gives me 16m. And I have a minus 5 on the top over p. And that would do it right there. That's what all those added up are. And as long as you got about half of these right, you'd be able to move on to the next section, which is the CLM section. And I'll do that on the next video.